we have come together to stand with Israel, rejoice in Israel, in the incredible achievements and unbelievable talents which have come out of this tiny state of ours, celebrating it with a lineup like no other. From the wonders of the mesmerizing Lior Sushard, who made his way to us from China, doing a big event for Alibaba, to our leaders of tomorrow with their incredible story, to the tales of Middle East diplomacy from Ambassador Dory Gold, and to the not to miss special solo performance by Idan Reichel, we are due for a real treat. Our MC for the night, a very good friend of mine, a huge supporter of Israel and stand with us, who is back by popular demand. He stars in his own stand-up special on Netflix while working on another one. He recently did a sold-out tour in Israel and premiered his new one-man show, Elon Gold, Pro Semite. Boy, do we need more of these. At the prestigious Montreal Comedy Festival. It was, by the way, at this event last year that we taped his now famous Christmas tree routine that went viral and was seen by millions around the world. I'm excited to see what gifts of laughter he will bring to us tonight here to be shared later with the world. Please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Elon Gold. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, that's all I get. I'm sharing gifts of laughter. I'm sharing gifts with you. What's up, stand with us, how are we doing? Welcome, I am Elon Gold, also known as the Jewish Jerry Seinfeld. That was my first gift of laughter. Um, I am so excited to be here. Is this exciting? The third annual Leaders of Tomorrow Gala? Come on, yes. Jews in the house? Come on, you gotta represent, Jews, where are you? Jews in the house? Yeah, yeah. be proud, represent. Although we don't really represent like that, it's more like we represent many clients. It's a different kind of represent, but I love performing for my people because I get to do jokes for you guys that I don't get to do, like on Netflix or in front of others. Like here's my favorite new joke, I'll open with this. I finally figured out why God invented chins to fold taluses. All right, there are no Jews here. I'm sorry. That usually does better. Gentiles in the house? Where are the Gentiles at? Just, that's it? What are you doing here? Seriously, what? Uh... Now, I know why you're here. You're here because the same reason that everyone in this room is here to stand with Israel. And we thank you for being here. We appreciate you. And we love you for supporting and standing with Israel. And trust me, there are more. There are more Gentiles here, but they get quiet and shy in this group. But they're, they're here, yeah. Hey, how does it feel to be in hiding? Yeah. I love all people. We welcome Jews, non-Jews. I love that we call them non-Jews. Think about that for a second. We make up 0.1% of the world population, but they're the nons. That's not really how it works, people. You see, there's all of them, and then us non-thems. We're the nons, okay? But I love how that's how proud we are as a people, and we should be, right? That we consider ourselves it. Like, we're what we are, and they're not what we are. We are the only tiny minority that does this, okay? No other group does this. You'll never see a little person be like, you know, I met a non-midget today. <laughs> really, you saw a non-midget? Oh yeah, they're all over, you just have to look up. My younger gay brother doesn't refer to me as his older non-gay brother. Um, you'll never hear this conversation in Dutch country, Pennsylvania. So did you hear? Jebediah is dating a non Amish. She's non Amish. His poor parents. I hope she at least knows how to churn butter. Even the butter people know, know that there's butter, and then there's, I can't believe it's not butter. By the way, at least we don't call the Gentiles that, right? At least we don't call them, I can't believe they're not Jews. That wouldn't be good. But I am so honored that they chose me to be here as the MC. You know, of all the comedians, I heard it was down to me and Louis C.K. Um, 
They made the right choice, yeah. I was third. It was Louie, then Cosby, then me. But I, uh... By the way, Cosby would have done this. He, he's looking for any gig if you want to hire... I think Cosby, I think if ISIS called him to do a holiday corporate retreat, he'd show up. I'd love to be on that call, right? Like, hello, Bill, uh, we are big fans of yours. Uh, not your comedy, the other stuff. Um... No, I mean, we like your comedy, but we love, you know, the, the old work that you used to do. I, uh, no, I have no, by the way, I just want to make an announcement just to let everyone know here, because I, you know, it's, it's terrible what's going on with all the comedians. It's embarrassed. It's a Shonda. I feel bad as a comedian, you know, but just, you know, full disclosure here, because there are a lot of accusers out there. I actually, and you're going to hear this in the news. I'm, I'm a little embarrassed. I have one accuser, uh, for unwanted advances, uh, it's my wife. And um, let me just say, if not for my unwanted advances, I wouldn't have four beautiful children, Kinahara, okay? Kinahara, I love a joke that has Kinahara and unwanted sexual advances in the same joke, but uh, I promised I'd be clean tonight, so we're gonna keep it clean. I understand that, because it's a Jewish event, and you know, I do a lot of these. I, I do, I do uh, every now and then I'll do a Chabad gala dinner. I don't wanna brag, but... Um, that's where my career's at. But anyway, and always, always, right before I go on, the, the rabbi will run backstage and just freak out. He goes, you can't be filthy, nothing dirty, you can't. And I'm always like, rabbi, you have 19 kids. You know about this stuff. <laughs> like, wait, I'm not allowed to talk about what you're constantly doing? That's not fair. I'm sorry. That's a double standard. But always, they're always so nervous. They're always like, oh, you can't be filthy. Don't say anything filthy. If you say it, don't think it. If you think it, don't say it. They all turn into Jackie Mason on me, right? To tell you the truth, it makes me nauseous to think of it in my position. That don't listen to such nauseating things. I don't want you to cross the line. I don't want you to get close to a line. If you see a line, turn around, build a fence around the line. I don't care what kind of line it is. If it's a straight line, a curved line, a bent line, a kaka, the kaka, the kaka, the kaka. Thank you. All right, are you ready to start this night or what? All right. Thank you all. This is really a very special night. We have an incredible lineup. We have such a great program for you. So take a look at the screen to learn a little bit about what we're doing here tonight. Take a look. You feel the connection deeply. The pride and the people inspire you. You yearn for peace and hope that your children and your grandchildren will love and support Israel. You want to inspire them to care as you do, to protect Israel's future. Do you take for granted that they will know what you know and feel what you feel? Do they know how far we have come, where we've been, where we are going? Will they be inspired and rise to the task? Will they stand tall for Israel? Will they understand never again? Our children on college campuses are being challenged for their support of Israel. We support the Antifa! We support the Antifa! Israel is a terrorist state! Israel is a terrorist state! They attack our children, our communities, your children, your community. Every day requires courage and strength. They are told that they don't belong. and their voices don't matter. Let's get off our white now. I've been this town for 10 years. Get the f off our conference now. That our history, our nation, our people don't matter. Zionism must be destroyed. It must be gotten rid of. Every aspect of it. You want to stand tall, to make a difference, to make sure that our pride shines through, that our children and our neighbors and their children will know what to do to show a legacy of pride, strength, and peoplehood. This is what Stand With Us does. That is who Stand With Us is. We represent you when you can't be there with 18 offices around the globe. We represent you in our high schools where we reach 50,000 students each year with the beauty of Israel and foster the next generation of Zionist leaders. We are your voice on campus, training students how to lead and reach over 100,000 of their peers each year in the face of intolerance and bigotry. We represent you when we reach 100 million people on Facebook during peak weeks. 
We educate for the future by sponsoring speaking tours and holding conferences around the world, training leaders and lifting communities. We are your hotline when rights are trampled on and emergency pro bono legal services are needed with over 150 attorneys standing by for students, faculty, and community members. We represent your legacy when we partner with over 750 different organizations around the world who care as you do about Israel. We are working in your name when we use innovative teaching methods to inspire middle schoolers with the wonder of Israel. Last year alone in New York, our high school team trained 10 interns and produced over 175 events, educating over 8,000 students and infusing them with knowledge and information about everything Israel. On local college campuses, we produced over 200 different events reaching nearly 15,000 students while using innovative tools and partnerships, including birthright follow-ups, making sure the fire kindled in Israel never perishes. In the community, we educated lawmakers and elected officials, supported anti-BDS legislation, and stood up to Roger Waters' hate wherever he performed. We were especially proud to shine light on Israel's history as we honored retired Captain Elgin Long, the last surviving member of the Alaska Airlines crew that rescued Yemenite Jews in 1949. We represent you when it's time to push back. We represent you when it's time to share Israel's story when it's time to teach, to stand up, to show undying pride for Israel. And we have only just begun. Help us reach more of the world. Help us empower more of our children, your children, to be courageous, to be confident, to fight smart, to win, and to always, always stand tall. why we're here. It's an amazing organization, and thank you all for being here tonight. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce a man described by none other than the New York Times as charming, lively, and provocative. Here he is. He's in the house. It's Israel's Consul General in New York. Please welcome Ambassador Donnie Dayan. Good evening. I hope that you know if that's what the New York Times wrote, it must be fake news. Um, I'm very glad to be here. Actually, in my way here, I became a little bit uh, philosophical, maybe even a little bit uh, Talmudic to follow the example of Elon. Um, and I was thinking about this name of this exciting, this wonderful organization stand with us. What does it mean? Is a request should be, maybe the name should be, please, stand with us is an order you must stand with us and you know in order to understand the name of this organization and why it's so appropriate we should understand its nature and standing with us means standing with the most amazing the most exciting the most just national the most successful national liberation movement of the modern era, the Zionist movement. Standing with us means standing with freedom, with democracy, against tyranny, against oppression. Standing with us means standing with the incredible story of the ingathering of the exiles, a country that absorbed three times its number of inhabitants in merely five or seven years, and all these under the pressure of uh, neighboring countries trying to annihilate it. Standing with us means standing with a country that, uh, the only country in the world that uh, paralyzed its commercial, fly, its commercial fleet and sent it to Addis Ababa for the first time in history to bring Africans to liberty and not to enslave them. Standing with us means standing with the incredible revival of the Hebrew language. Standing with us means standing with the 
amazing story of the re of a people that for 3000 years for 2000 years yearned to return to its capital Jerusalem and returned and then reunited it and liberated it and made it a place of freedom of worship for all religions a freedom of liberty for all mankind so i think that uh, stand with us is not a request and it's not an order I came to the conclusion while arriving here that stand with us is a moral imperative. It's the moral imperative of persons of persons that love justice. It's the moral imperative of decent persons to stand by Israel, to stand with Israel in a, in days in which on one hand we are strong but on the other hand there is also a strong mo movement that tries that tries constantly to vilify us and to demonize us and to delegitimize us in order to achieve their ultimate goal to erase us from the map so standing with us is the most proper name for for an, an organization that engages people for the most just cause that exists in these days in the international arena in the most just cause that exists today for a Jew and alone also for a non-Jew this is the most just case that a decent person a person that trusts that cherishes liberty freedom democracy and Jewish values can do stand with us stand with the state of Israel stand with this organization and you will be in the right side of history thank you so much thank you ambassador all of this that you see here tonight and last week in San Francisco Chicago next month where I'll be in LA in the UK and in Israel this started 16 years ago in a small living room in Los Angeles by the one and only Roz Rothstein. Yes, she's a, amazing. If you ever get to meet Roz Rothstein, she is a force of nature. This was all a vision in her head, now it's a global, incredible organization. She's the CEO and co-founder. Unfortunately, Roz was unable to be with us tonight, but to speak on her behalf, I'd like to call back to the stage again our Northeast Executive Director, Shahar Azani. Shahar. Hello again. Tonight, tonight is a special night. It's a night of wonder. It's a night of meaning. It's a night that combines both depth and joy. Very much similar to the story of Israel itself. Tonight, you will also be leaving with a meaningful gift. When I served at the Israeli consulate in Los Angeles, I met someone by the name of Mitch Flint, a beloved patriot, a true friend of the state of Israel and the Jewish people. Mitch was part of the greatest generation. He was one of the Machal pilots, whom upon learning of the plight of the Jewish state and Israel's need during the War of Independence, rose to the challenge and came to Israel to fly with a non-existent tiny Israeli Air Force to stand against its enemies. Mitch passed away on September 16th, 2017. And tonight, you will be leaving with the book Angels in the Sky, which tells Flynn's story and the incredible story of those heroes in whose path we walk today as we owe them a profound debt of gratitude and honor. It was a beautiful summer day when as a young diplomat many, many years ago, I landed in Nairobi, Kenya. I remember being polished at the Israeli Foreign Ministry. I knew all of the talking points, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, CNN, Christian Amanpour, and Yasser Arafat. Upon entering the cab at Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, the taxi driver looks back and says, Karibu, Kenya, welcome to Kenya. Where are you from? Now I have to admit, that by security's orders, the usual answer should be, I'm a diplomat with the UN. God forbids for you to say Israel or you might end up in a trunk on the way to Dubai. <laughs> However, as you know me, not the most untalkative of individuals, I said, Israel, 
getting ready for a back and forth discussion on the politics and intricacies of Israeli-Palestinian peace process. How surprised I was as a diplomat and as an Israeli to hear the expression so rarely heard in the Middle East and in Israel. Thank you, he said. Thank you. Thank you for what? I've only been in Kenya for two minutes. <laughs> Thank you, he said, because my father was one of those trainees who left Kenya for Israel back when Kenya gained its independence. And his training on water conservation and drip irrigation helped my family and surrounding villages to survive the dry season in Kenya. And my father told me, he says, whenever you meet an Israeli, say thank you. Remember the gratitude. <laughs> my dear friends, this is the diplomacy of gratitude, the strategic diplomacy put in place by the late Golda Meir and that resonates to this very day to teach us a lesson not only of the past, but also of the future. Indeed, Israel is a land of wonder, a true marvel, a realization of dreams thousands of years old, and more. But there is another side to that coin. The dark heart of anti-Semitism and Israel hatred is still beating strong in various corners of this earth the anti-Semitic campaign targeting Israel for boycott, the industry of lies working relentlessly day and night to slander and undermine the Jewish state, strangle it economically, and aspire to see its demise. On college campuses and in the public sphere, what is supposed to be a legitimate political debate quickly descends into a chaotic hate fest and chaos. In Farmingdale on Long Island, a car was driving around last week with a sticker that read, I am a proud anti-Semite. At Rutgers, a professor was posting anti-Semitic slur on his Facebook and social media. Saudi-funded programs at Georgetown University and elsewhere are training teachers, educators on the Middle East with a horrible bias against Israel implanted in those who are supposed to breed and create the next generation. The LA public school system provided a workshop for teachers hosted by an organization that supports the boycott movement, again with a terrible bias against Israel. And the results, they're quick to appear. The student newspaper at the University of California at Berkeley posted a cartoon last month, not dissimilar to ones shown on Der Sturmer, showing Professor Alan Dershowitz and the liberal case for Israel covering for IDF soldier, killing, stepping on children, covered in blood. The future generation today are educated and taught to repeat the horrors of the past. Where do we draw the line? At what point do we stand up to say enough is enough? To us, tonight, the answer is clear, here and now. Stand With Us works on two parallel paths. One is proactive, strategic, educate and empower the next generation. The curriculum and the work that started on college campuses quickly enough reached one of our flagship programs at high schools as we realized we can't afford to sit and wait until our children arrive at college. And now we're proud to announce that we're working in middle schools where we can reach and touch the hearts of the next generation with curriculum that is built and targeted for what they are able to understand and really assimilate. At the same time, we also make sure to stand up to anti-Semitism and hatred whenever and wherever it rears its ugly head. I can assure you that we will never keep quiet in the face of the industry of lies we will always stand by those hurt by it. We will always let them know that you are never alone, whether you're a student out there who spoke up for Israel or a faculty member, a community member that stands up for Israel in their local co-op. Stand with us and all of us will be with you in this great power grid of Israel love that reaches from one end of the earth to the other. What do we do when something happens? How do we take care of the issue when we sense the nasty smell of anti-Israel hatred. First and foremost, confirm it. Is it true? What are the details? Then we do 
something that's perceived to be by some to be not entirely Jewish. We collaborate. We seek to think who else is dealing with the issue. What other organizations or individuals are at the forefront of finding a solution, and how can we work together? As you saw in the video with a network of over 750 organizations globally, we are proud to play ball together. We will issue a strong statement if needed. Then we will use our incredible social media reach, reaching hundreds of millions around the world to create campaigns, letter writing, petitions, billboards, anything that needs to be done and anything that leads Roger Waters to complain against the conspiracy that we have against him. Wherever he goes, we shall be. Wherever he speaks, here we are. But it doesn't end then just when the headlines are over. We need to make sure, what's the follow-up? Has anything changed? Has it been taken care of? Like you heard on the video, we have an incredible legal team that includes over 150 pro bono lawyers who work throughout the country and who were able to deal in the last year alone with over 450 different cases of anti-Semitism and anti-Israel hatred. So let's give them a round of applause. But the truth is that we could not have done it without your support. I want to take this opportunity on behalf of myself, our CEO and co-founder, Roz Rothstein, and all of us worldwide. Thank you for your partnership. Thank you for making it happen. I'm also happy to announce that tonight, every dollar you give, every support you provide us will be matched. So your gift will be doubled. Your generosity allows us to make a true difference in the world, making our world a better place and fulfilling the commitment, the deep commitment we have for our forefathers, for our own generation, and for our children who rely on us to give them a better world. So let's do just that. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Shir Levy and I'm 17 years old. I am a senior at Francis Lewis High School, a school in New York City. My name is Eden Gordisher. I'm a junior at Hunter College and I'm studying psychology. My parents are both from Israel uh, and I've grown up uh, attending a Jewish school that's very pro-Israel. And so growing up, I really had the Israeli culture and Judaism instilled in me. So growing up, I always cared for Israel and I loved visiting Israel during the summers. Growing up, my family always had an unquestioning, dying love for Israel and I always considered Israel home. So uh, when I was a freshman in high school, I looked for different internships and I came across Stand With Us. My Hillel director saw how passionate I was about talking about Israel. When she connected me to Stand With Us, I learned that I was able to then take that passion and move into an advocacy role on my campus. Part of the work we do is not just providing students with the information, but providing them with the skills and the guidance to really help them grow as leaders, not only in the Israel community, but in any community they're a part of. The Emerson Fellowship gave me the resources and the skills that I needed to become an advocate on campus and to transition into the leader that I am. My internship has provided me with so much opportunities uh, to be a better leader, to be a stronger advocate for Israel. Knowing I was going into my public school in New York City, I knew most of the, my peers and most of the people I was trying to educate were apathetic towards Israel. In Hunter, we had two anti-Israel clubs, the Students for Justice in Palestine and the Palestinian Solidarity Alliance. They were both very active on campus. I never thought that it was a reality until I saw it and it motivated me to do something more. Stand With Us is about knowing the truth, sharing the truth in a way that's accurate and believable. I could be that person to hold an Israeli flag and to celebrate Israel and to be the one to make other students comfortable to come to love Israel publicly. Stand With Us has given me a support system that I'll always have throughout my entire life. The most valuable part of the Emerson Fellowship was the connections I made with students and with staff from around the country. I would like to thank Stand With Us and all of you for the opportunities you have provided me and thousands of other high school students across North America. We couldn't have done it without you. I'm so grateful for all of the opportunities that I've had because they shaped me into the leader that I am today, a leader of tomorrow. 
Stand With Us helped me be a better speaker, it helped me share the knowledge I have and present it in a way that's clear and cohesive. Stand With Us made me a better leader of tomorrow. Please welcome Roger Waters and Linda Sarsour, everybody. Um, exactly. Now, I would like to call to the stage, stand with us, Leaders of Tomorrow, Gala Dinner Co-Chairs, Barbara Fix and David Schatz. Come on out here, guys. How are you? Are you going to say? These guys, they're the reason. How are you? They're the reason we're here tonight, and they're the reason we work day and night for Israel. Please give a warm welcome now, yes, to them. Our very own, yes. And now here are our very own Leaders of Tomorrow, Sheer Levy, to receive our Leader of Tomorrow High School Award. Come on out here, Sheer. Is she coming? Hi, congratulations. I am so honored to receive this award. It's because all of you, that high school students like me, are confident and empowered to be leaders for Israel, even before we reach high school ca college campus. Thank you. And now, to receive our Leader of Tomorrow Campus Award, and here's the weird part, I'm very good friends with Eden's parents, and I had, n yes, and I had no idea this was happening until I saw that we were on the same bill together, and the nachas was just beyond. I knew her as a, as a little girl, and I knew she was awesome then, but sh I'm so proud of you. Please welcome our leader of Tomorrow Campus Award, Eden Gorodisher. I want to take a moment to acknowledge the amount of love for Israel in this room. I, I created a club at Hunter called Ahava, love, for the amount of love that I feel for Israel. It's this burning passion, emotion, that I just want to share with the world. And I want to thank you all for coming. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment we've all, or at least I've been waiting for. You know, to say he's a superstar is an understatement. I may have a few million views on my little videos. He's got hundreds of millions of views. He's known around the world. I may be a pretty good comedian, but I'm not the best. He's literally the number one best mentalist on the planet Earth. I saw him on the James Corden show. He blew me away, and he's just, yes, he's just absolutely incredible. He's a master mentalist, known around the world, all of Hollywood. Let's take a look at the world of Lior Souchard. Lior Souchard. Hello. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Why everybody looks so scared? <laughs> good evening, everyone. Good evening. Before I start, before I start, something very uh, important we has to we have to do one second one second can you sir you can you do like this with your hand a little bit up 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 there don't don't move I need a volunteer oh we have someone <laughs> right here one second you just hold this very important hold this is the secret scroll hold this hold the microphone with your other hand if you can stand up for me for a second I'm gonna ask you a question from the stage don't worry just stand up quickly stand up it's, it's a warm-up the show hasn't started yet it's a it's a little warm-up it's a little warm-up um, to the microphone, say out loud your first name. Stan. Stan. You are correct, Stan. You are correct. <laughs> I'm going to write like this. Can you see Stan? Can you see Stan? Do we have the video? We have video. Stan. I'm going to ask you a very simple question before we even start, just uh, as a warm-up. Stan, if I would ask you to tell us all, I wrote something, a, a two-digit number, what would you say to the microphone? A two-digit number. Say it. 20. Say to the microphone. 20. This is, your, this is your number? Because I wrote here, Stan will say 20. Can you see this, uh, Stan? Can you see? Now, the question is, the question is, Stan, why did you say 20? I don't know. Why, how did I know you will say 20? Because you don't know. Because what? Because it's the check I gave him before the show? <laughs> no, 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 no. You can sit down, give Stan a big round of applause. Let's begin. So good evening, everyone. Stan, you are the guardian of the secret scroll of Stan with us. Ooh. 
Okay, so don't, so, every, time the, every time the audience is applauding, you're going to go like this with the scroll. Very important, okay? We'll do a little test. Big round of applause. <laughs> perfect, perfect. I love you. Very good. So good evening, everyone. Uh, it's great to be here for this amazing course. My name is uh, Leo Souchard. I am a real-life mentalist. I work with people's minds. I usually um, use three special techniques. Mind reading, mind influencing, uh, and bullshit. And... Uh, <laughs> We're gonna, use, we're gonna use all those techniques together. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, is it really possible to read mine? So Stan, thank you for the microphone. Thank you, keep the scroll, uh, Stan. Let me look at you. Every time I go into the audience, everybody's like this. Right? Everyone is like, yeah. Don't let him choose me, please. So, hello, how are you? Hello. You want to get picked? Hello, 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 hello. Let's see, let's, she, yeah, yeah, she wants to, yeah, stand up, stand up, stand up. Come with me, come with me. Everybody give her a big round of applause. Let's start, we have someone coming. Make the way from here to here. Very good, you're they, going on the stage. Oh, we have a problem in the screen. Ah, look at this, look at this. It's be, no, okay, no, not yet. No, they can still see me. Hello, how are you? Come, come quickly. How are you, the stairs here? How are you? How are you? Come, come, that's fine, that's fine. Oh, it's fixed, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Give me a round of applause, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're fired, okay. Um, hi, uh, what is your name? Tracy. Tracy, like my mother. Esther, listen. Um, <laughs> Tracy, before we do this test, do we know each other personally? No. No, and you seem to be very happy about it. <laughs> are, you, are you afraid of me? No. No, soon you will be. This is the test. It's the first test. I'm going to explain to you the concept of what I do. I'll give you a little notebook. You're going to go all the way over there, or over there, or so where I, can I, where I cannot see you, and you're going to think of someone that you know who is not here. Okay? Anyone? You're going to imagine a television screen. I always say to people, use your imagination. If you don't have good imagination, just imagine you have one. Okay? That's it. <laughs> do it over there. Just print the name in capital so we can show the first name. Someone that you know who is not here. Okay. Here. Close it. Close it like this, like this, and come back. People are very skeptical, especially here, especially here. So don't, don't, uh, don't show it to anyone. Just do it over there, over there. Yeah, yeah, do it over there, and come back. Make sure nobody see. Okay, don't let anyone follow you, Tracy. Very, very important. That yeah, just show over there. No, no I'm going away. I'm going. Do, 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 yeah. oh, sorry, sorry. No. Okay, do it over there under the special camera. Uh, no. Now this show is about standing with us. This is show about positivity. So when I call her back, she's gonna come here. I would like everybody to start applauding like crazy. All the guys who sh shout like nuts, all the ladies I wanna see bras in the air. It has to be a lot of energy and fun. And Tracy, take your time. Shahar is paying by the hour, so it's okay. That's fine. One name, one name only, put the rubber bands. Did you finish? Did you put the rubber bands? I, I didn't put it great, you just do, yeah. Like this, like this. Like this, yes, take this. Everybody give her a big round of applause. Enough, enough, enough. Not too much. Put it behind the back, the back. Don't say a word, I'm gonna explain to you how this works. I'm looking at you, first thing comes to my mind that this is a man or a woman, correct? <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Say, say men, woman, men, woman. Man, woman, man, woman. Did you see, did you uh, notice the hesitation? Man, woman, man, it, You think of a woman, right? Yes. Yes, it's not very impressive. You are thinking this is the 50-50 part, I know. Hold on, sir, hold it, it's getting better. Oh my God. Um, can you think of the number of letters in the name? But don't say, just think about it. Because if you say the number of letters and then I tell them, it's less impressive, but <laughs> you have it, you have it? Um, Six? Yes. This is the moment where the entire audience goes, ooh. You see? It's incredible. But it's not impressive. You know why? Because many ladies have six letters in the name. Look, what is your name? Linda. What? Linda. Lean. Never mind. <laughs> it's not impressive. People want to see if it's, it's possible to do it. So, so anybody know this person but you? Yeah. Yes, okay. Yeah. Can you think of the first letter for me? But don't say, just think of it. Did you think of it? Okay, stop. You think of J. Yes. See, it's kind of interesting. <laughs> and you were over there, you were thinking of a name, then you changed your mind because you said yes. to yourself, then you said to yourself, there is no way in the world you will get this name. No, I you, almost wrote two names. Oh, really? And then you yes. said, no, this is a much more difficult name. No. Like, I'm, I'm going to try to say it. Two names popped in my Really? Mind. Really? Is it someone very close to you? Yes. Younger than you? Yes. 
my kids or something, no? But uh, I'm, 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 don't say what. Uh, I'm trying. Uh, Jean? Jean? Yes. Jean? Yes? <laughs> What's the name? Jean. Jean! Yes. Give her a big round of applause. Oh, Show me this. Thank you so much. Give her a big round of applause. Thank you very much. Let me hear you go. You know, this is the moment people are so blown away. They ask me the same question. They ask me, Lior. Let's do it together. I will say, Lior, you answer back. How do you do it? Lior. I'm glad you asked me. I always tell them, if I tell you, I will have to kill you. <laughs> there once was a guy in the middle of my show. I did a big uh, corporate event. This guy raised his hand. He started to scream. He says, Lior, you do so many crazy things. You, you guess names and you guess teachers and you get... Who thought of a teacher? You thought of a teacher? You thought of a teacher? Don't say. Don't say. What grade? Junior high. Junior high. Male or female? Female. female. Miss or Mrs.? Miss. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, no, don't, don't say the name, don't say the name. And, and they ask me how do, and I tell them, if I tell you, I will have to kill you, right? So this guy is saying, Leo, please tell me, and I'm telling this guy, sorry, if I tell you, I will have to kill you. He then stood up and told me, can you please tell my wife? <laughs> something strange is about to happen. Um, something pretty amazing is about to happen. Uh, let's see, I don't know, I need to look at you. Everybody's lowering their head. It's a combination of joy, and fun and being afraid. Let me go to the cheap seats. Hello, hi. Hello. You, 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 you. Stand up. Join me on the stage. Give it a big round of applause. Come. Come quickly, come quickly, quickly, quickly. Come quickly, come quickly, come quickly. Come here. Come here. We're going to do something incredible, something which is unbelievable. Um, yes, what is your name? Patrick. Patrick, yes, you're good Hello. for this. Yeah. Patrick, it's good. I also need the, who has a phone, 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 phone? Have you have a phone? Yeah. Which one do you have? Uh, ah, yes, yes, yes. This is, uh, you didn't, uh, this it's is a, cheap a one, yeah. it's a, what, do you, Patrick, do you have a, you have a password? Yeah. It's okay, I know it, I know it. <laughs> yeah, I know that. It's easy. Um, where's the calculator? Oh, I found it, see? I opened it. Listen, uh, it's a simple game, Patrick. Where are you from? Israel. Israel, oh, okay. Simple calculation. Use your mind, be creative. Uh, this is all about stand with us. You ready? Yeah. Give me your height. What's your height? 5'8. So I go 58. Plus, shoe size? 9.5. What? 9.5. 9.5. Plus, take the calculator and you keep doing the math, okay? Don't press the equal until I tell you. Now, uh, what's your house number? My what? House number. Plus. A four-digit number, whatever you want, whatever you want, go. Plus, this is the third gala, press three. That's nine, never mind. Plus, 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 plus. You keep doing it. Um, random five-digit number, go, 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 quickly, quickly. Plus, add the size of your, uh, you know, you know, you know. Plus, <laughs> you know, it's funny when I say this joke, people always think and they go like, hmm, and they go like this. <laughs> Patrick, he was thinking and went like, hmm. <laughs> so I don't know if it's inch or a centimeter, never mind, never mind. Divide, divide by a three digit number, whatever you want. Equal, you should have a score. Tell everyone your score out loud. Listen. 730.2151. Music down, music down, music down. One. Again, 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 sorry. 730.2151. So 730.2151. Yep. This number, this, let me show it to you. Can you, you Can you zoom in? Can you zoom in? Can you zoom in? Okay. 730, okay, let's go. 730.2151. Yeah. This number was made by random calculation that you made yourself, house yeah. number, whatever, da, 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 uh, height, house number, random number, then you added a very small digit, and then you added it, <laughs> to create a 7302151. There's no way I could know this number. No way. No way. No way. Unless. Unless. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I sent a scroll at the beginning of the show. Straight to this table. Thank you, sir. Before we even start, actually, Actually, you see, you're so excited. You need to change to the 10. The number was 7302151. No way. No way. 
No way. No way. I wore it pretty strange. Seven. What's the next digit? Three. Three. Zero. Zero. Two. Two. One. One. Five. Five. What? Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a number. This is Israel. Questions? Oh, how, 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 how? You know what? At this point, I'm looking for one guy. I'll tell you who is this guy. I don't know where he is right now. This is the most skeptical person in the audience. A guy who says, it will never work on me. I don't believe in this bullshit. It's all blah, 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 blah. I need someone who says, <laughs> you're, nah, you're not skeptical enough. I need someone like super skeptic. Shachar, help me. Who is the most skeptical person here? Who? This guy? The rabbi! Come, rabbi, come, 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 come. Hello, rabbi! Alright, so. You're, you're skeptical? A lot. A lot. Oh, I love it, I love it. Uh, say stop, say stop. stop. Here, I'm going, I'm going this direction. You're very skeptical, it's good, it's good, it's good. Hello. Everybody looks so skeptical. What is your name? Mike. Mike? Yeah. Stand up, Mike. <laughs> Mike, come quickly, come quickly. You are skeptical. I'm going to try to prove you wrong, but you're going to have fun. We're going to have fun, okay? We're going to have fun. So before we start, uh, this act is all about numbers. So for example, Mike, come quickly. Let me give you the mic, Mike. Mike, Mike. Let me show you something scary. You afraid? No. Watch this, watch this. It's a warm up, it's a warm up. Do you have a bank account? Yes. Why are you laughing? We're here to donate. Why are you laughing? We're here to donate. So here, here's how I raise donations, okay? Okay. When you go to the bank, you put the card and then you put your secret ki pin code, right? Right. Anybody knows your pin code? No. Very good, very good, very good. Very good, very good. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm just trying. I'm just trying for the rabbi. He is skeptical, I'm trying for the rabbi. Swear, no, you, you cannot swear, okay? Promise you did not tell me your pin code. I did not tell you my pin did code. Did you tell any of your friends? No. It's fair? It's fair. It's fair. Watch this. Count, l l let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Okay. One of the numbers appears in your pin code, right? Yes. You count from one to zero, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Okay, I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. No, I'm gonna make. What's the first digit? Only the first digit of your bingo. The first digit? Yes. Four. Four, like this. Yes, like this? Yes. yes. Uh, let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, look over there. Uh, what's the second digit? Five. Five. Yes. Wait, gonna... before I continue, before I continue, Shaka, how much do we want for stand up to stand with us? Okay, okay. <laughs> fine, fine, fine. Does he have? He has? Okay. Uh, did you ever tell me? No. So you'll be blown away when I tell you it's one. One? Yeah. It's Can one. we so stop there? What? <laughs> Can we stop, stop there? Okay, so so I'm not gonna expose the last digit. I'm just gonna show it to you and by your body language you will see if I'm right or wrong. Okay? Four, five, one. Mm -hmm. I think this is the last digit. Yes? Amazing! 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 No, no, okay, so now, so he's skeptic. We're gonna play a quick skeptic game. Quick skeptic game. Rabbi! Ooh. <laughs> See, Jewish, he goes. Ooh. Just tell, confirm that this is a real bill. <laughs> what? Real bill, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, one thousand dollars. Decide quickly. You want them or not? 100%. Put it in your pocket quickly. You. My God, you are a rabbi. <laughs> okay, I'm kidding. Okay, look, look, look. Simple game. Simple game. We do it quickly. 
The way to do it, this is the process of our, uh, of our mind. Look at the, take the microphone in your hand, okay? You have a watch? I see you have a watch, okay. Uh, it's a few minutes before nine. I want you to tell us any time. I'm gonna write it on the board over here. Any time in the world, it could be any time. Try to be original. It could be like uh, the, the hour and the minute, anything you want. How original could you get with time? You have 1,440 possibilities. 24 hours, 1.43 p.m. 1.40, this is your time? Okay, I'm gonna write it here so you won't forget. forget. 1.43 p.m. Now, by saying this, this gives you, me a lot of information about you. So this is the game. Take my ring, put it behind the back. Behind the back. Mix, 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 mix. You, when you're ready, you gotta go like this. Yes, go like this. And if I don't find in which hand is the ring, you keep the $1,000 and I give you this gift inside this uh, blue box. Cool? Are you right, right-handed right or left-handed? Right-handed. So it's probably in the right show. Everybody, this is the game, you understand? Let's do it again, behind the back. Rabbi, you can do it. Be skeptical. Don't say if it's here or it's here. Don't say a word. Now, he is have a very good watch. I can see that you've been in China recently. It's in the right again. Show them, you're very good, very easy. Do it again. Come on, Rabbi, you can do it. Oh, by the way, I have only one rule, Rabbi. Don't put it in the back pocket, like you thought of doing right now. He did. See, no, go like this, go like this, go like this. Don't say, don't say, don't say, don't say. Do you play poker sometimes? Never. Okay, please don't play because you're very stuck in the beginning. You're very bad. It's in the right hand again. Show everybody that was right. Thank you very much. You want to try again? Yes. One last time. Come on, for $1,000 and this gift. Huh? Okay, don't say, don't say. Now, you probably think it's going to change. His mind, he will not. He's still here. So I'm going to go. No, no, I, I know, I know, I know it's difficult. I know it's difficult. You still skeptical a little bit? Have you ever uh, have you ever been in a casino? Have been, yes. Have been. People always ask me. Now between us, Lior, if you have those special abilities to read minds, to, I I I'm still thinking about your teacher. I, I don't know. <laughs> Why do you do shows? Why don't you go to the casino and you win lots of money, Rabbi? The answer is, I go. <laughs> I go. Sometimes I win. Sometimes the casino loses. Take the. This is a dice. How do you say a dice in English? A die. A die, okay, so hold it close to your chest like this so you can see the number on the top. Yeah, like this, like this. Yeah, what is this number? Five. Change the number. What is uh, this number? One. Change the number, what is this? Two. I, I can six, see, I've seen this trick four, before. So, yeah. three. So, I can see, but it's not impressive. Do it like this, so I cannot see. Take the microphone so I can talk, you can talk to me. Choose any number, tell me that you have a number, I'm not looking. Got a number. You got a number? Yep. By any chance, did you start with number three? Yes. Okay, everybody choose three at the beginning, don't worry, everybody. Change, it, you mind. Change your mind, do whatever you want, it's your, whatever you want. Go for it. You got it? Yep. Okay, after three, you're probably gonna go with number one. Did you go with one? Yes. Okay, everyone choose one after three. Everyone, everyone, everyone. Uh, no, it's fine, but, uh, can you? Can you do me a favor? Can you cover my eyes with your hands? Yes, this has nothing to do with a trick. I just like this part. You have a number? Yes. Did you go with six by any chance? No. No, you, you thought of six? I did, yes, it wasn't six. Okay, okay, okay. So you thought of six, but then you said, I'm gonna try to trick Leo and go to the same three. Yes. Yes, okay, okay. And one last time, Reba, one last time. Any number, any number, I'm gonna look. You have it? Yeah. I'm trying to calculate with you. So he thought of six. Da -da 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 -da. Now he tells himself, you have a number? Yes. Okay. Um, I think he will stay on six. Yes, yes, yep. yes, yes, okay. So I know you're still skeptical. I know, I know, but this is nothing. This is nothing. Because, you know what, between us, I'm gonna finish this with a big grand finale, okay? So tell me your age quietly. I'm not gonna say it out loud, you're quietly. 27, okay, look. You don't look 27, you look 26. So I'm wise, so I'm wise, yeah. wise. You're gonna go to the side and you're gonna write here a number, any number you want, between 27 and 100. Don't do 28, you can do obvious. You're 199, I know. Don't go for the, the, the. Any number here, close it, do it over there. While you're doing this, I will do a little grid here, a little sketch of your brain. This is, will be here. Something like this. I'm gonna try to do this. Okay, like this. Okay, I hope this works. Did you finish? You finish? Okay. I'm still thinking about this. It's crazy. Uh, close it, close it, close it. Now, I'm not gonna open this. I'm destroying it completely. Please, 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 Rabbi, very, very important that you don't give me any information, okay? You can say the number. Don't say it. I'm just joking. Don't say it. 
the number mean something to you or is it random? Random. Random. I will have two chances to get your number, okay? Four, because you are skeptical. More, like this. <laughs> okay? I will write a number, you say yes or no, okay? Uh, 47, yes or no? Wrong. This is not 47? That is 47. That's what I said. You're right. I didn't say it's your number. I said it's 47. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the grand finale. When I say now, the rabbi is going to give me a countdown from 10 to 0. I ask all of you to join him in the countdown when I tell you. you I have to hear everybody, okay, everybody? In those 10 seconds, I'm going to write a bunch of numbers, and whatever happens, happens. I'm going to see your number. We're going to go in 3, 2, God, nine seconds. Take the microphone, come here. Your number is here. Give me the $1,000 back. I'll take my bow, and it's going to be the end of the show. Yes? It's not there? No. Huh? Not there? No? No. No? No. <laughs> I need someone to stand with me now. <laughs> it's not there? You, you got, no? Really? No. Oh, sh um, what? Come here. Okay, come here. What was your number? What was your number? 67. What? 67. <laughs> what was the number? 67? 67. Yeah, it's there. You can see. What? I don't see it. Let me explain. Come here. It took me nine seconds. Look at the screen. 67? 7 and 12 is 19, and 1 is 20, and 47 is 67. 2 plus 8 is 10, 11, 21, and 46 is 67. Oh 5 and gosh. 10, 15, 3, 18, 49, 67. 4 and 6 is 10, 9, 19, 48, 67. Wait until I show you the verticals. 7 and 2 is 9, and 9, 19, 49, 67. 63 is 9, 12, 21, 46, 67. 48, 58, 59, and 8, 67. 4 and 5 is 9, 20, and 47 is exactly 67. No, no. There's a gentleman over there who did not clap his hands. You know why, Rabbi? Why? He's trying to calculate the diagonals. Look. <laughs> 4 and 10, 14, 67 this way. 9 and 3, 12, 20, 47, 67. Just for, just for fun, I took the corners. 7 and 9, 16 and 4 and 47. This is also 67. The middle here is also 67. This is First of all, give me my money back. You know what? Give me just 100. 100. That's it. Only one. One more. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Can I check your pockets now? I gave you 1,000. We counted. <laughs> tell you what, tell you what, um, well, well, I get the money, but I still want to give you a gift to make you unskeptical. And if this gift will be amazing for you, the audience will be so blown away. It's going to be amazing. Uh, this is the gift for you. You have an office, Rabbi? In Crown Heights. In Crown Heights. You sometimes go there? Yeah. So this is my gift to you. No, you, you're wondering. I did give you a gift. It's It's... It's here. I brought you. I don't know if, if you like it. It's uh, it's kind of it's kind of nice. It's a clock. It's 1:43 p.m. a.m. I don't care. It doesn't have any batteries, so you can take it with you. Uh, I brought it with me. I had a feeling you will say 1:43. So this is for you. Thank you very much. Give him a big round of applause. Thank you so much, my friend. Ladies and gentlemen, he's a believer. Hello, sir. Yeah, hello, hello. <laughs> stop, stop I'm so happy to see you. No, me too. <laughs> um, what, uh, what was your age when you had this teacher? What was my age when I had the teacher? The teacher you're thinking of. Uh, about 13, 14 years 13, old. 13, 14. So it's Miss something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Miss, is it Miss uh, McCohen? Yeah. Yes, Miss McCohen, yes? Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. And uh, for you, thank you, I know it's strange, I know it's strange. For you, I will say something from the bottom of my heart. You know, it's time for me, I, 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 I'm a master of influencing, of suggestions and mind reading. So I influence all of you to double your donations. <laughs> and remember the most Im important thing, always think happy thoughts and positive thoughts. Do you know why? Because you can never know who is reading them. <laughs> my name is Leo Susha. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you so much. Abraham Isaac Kook, the first Ashkenazic chief rabbi of Israel, and he talked about the inner spark. And it wasn't necessarily for the most religious Jews, it, it was Jews that were not so religious, but, but it's a feeling, it's a passion, and I have that passion. I wasn't always passionate. Um, honestly, I was, I was a bit indifferent for a while, and I can pinpoint it, it's 2006, and Israel is fighting its second war against Lebanon and Hezbollah. And I turn on the most prominent television stations, CNN. And for some reason, they all seem to imply that it's Israel's fault. I needed to find out. I needed to find out the truth. And ultimately, that took me to my passion for Israel. I can't keep quiet. I have to stand up. I have to speak the truth. Israel. It's a blessing, it's a miracle. And if, if our young people don't know the truth, we won't have that miracle. I think when I first went to Israel, I, I, I felt a sense of belonging. I, I always feel like I'm, I'm part of the, the fabric. I think, it, I think what brought me to Stand With Us ties back to 2006 and, and, and that misinformation that I saw on, on major stations like CNN. The truth wasn't there. It wasn't there. Um, and then over the years, having experienced the miracle and blessing that is Israel, I want people to know the truth. I want there to continue to be this miracle and blessing. And the passion is, is stronger than ever. Stand With Us has an amazing, amazing educational program that reached, first it reached out to college students, then it moved on to high school students. For the last two or three years, we've been working with middle school students. And that's not even to mention our, our social media. Um, we get 100 million hits in a week. I mean, so, so everybody is being educated. And what's so important about Stand With Us is it's the truth. We don't make up any stories. We don't have any, any uh, false initiatives, it's just let people understand the truth about Israel and the blessing and the miracle will take care of itself. Not everybody has the time to study these issues, to learn about these issues, and, and with all of the false narratives out there, this is a wonderful opportunity to get it right. We have to get it right. I, I don't want to sit around every day and just complain about it. That doesn't accomplish anything. What accomplish something is doing, teaching, educating. And that's what I'm a part of with Stand With Us, and I'm so proud of it. I'm very proud of my husband, Andrew. I'm proud of who he is and what he does. And I'm certain that his passion for Israel and for Stand With Us will continue to burn bright. Congratulations, Andrew. This is what makes Stand With Us all the more vital. It makes this education ex accessible to our young people and our future leaders. Investing in Stand With Us is investing in our children, and our children are our leaders of tomorrow. Can I just uh, take another moment to say how unfreaking believable Lior Suchard was? Was that incredible? I think he may just be the Mashiach, I'm not sure. Thank you, Lior, and thank you, Rabbi Seth Rogan. Let's, um, 
let's continue. I, I believe it's Seth in disguise. It might be. I would like to now call to the stage, stand with us, Northeast co-chairs of the board, Dr. Eric Mandel and my pal, Robert French. Come on out here, guys. Look at you, it's you guys. And also it gives me great pleasure to welcome to the stage tonight's honoree and stand with us, Northeast and national board member, a true lover, lover of Israel. Please give a warm welcome to Andrew Kliegerman, everybody. I wrote a few words, but I think I already said it. Um, it's really a pleasure to be here today with so many people who care about Israel and stand with us, an organization making a difference every day in the eyes of the world for the next generation with the help of the next generation. Um, I'm not a rabbi, but it's no coincidence that this week's Torah portion is relevant to stand with us. Telling that the matriarch Rebecca received a prophecy about the twins she was carrying who struggled in utero. They struggled before they were even born. These twins would go on to be the founders of two different nations. The older brother Esau, representing the nations of the world. The younger brother Jacob, later to be named Israel, and whose children become our nation, would represent the people of Israel. And so here we are, 4,000 years later. The struggle of worldviews continues for the hearts and the minds of our children and for the truth of our peoples. This is where Stand With Us is so important. I remember a few years ago when anti-Israel messaging started appearing in Westchester in Metro North train stations. We immediately launched a counter campaign. We shined a light on the truth using billboards to tell the story of Israel, speaking up and leaving no lie unanswered, educating and empowering. That's what Stand With Us does. So I'm grateful to be honored for my small role in the struggle. It's my honor to have an impact in any way I can. I want to thank my wife, June, my sons, Matthew and Jackson, for inspiring me, my mother, Marilyn, my sister, Cheryl, brother-in-law, Andy, for standing by my side and supporting it, Stand With Us. Um, Stand With Us will always have my support as we lead the way in the struggle for Israel. And I want to thank each and every one of you for your support yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Thank you so much. Now, I'd like to call to the stage Catherine Prince, Times of Israel correspondent in New York. Catherine, come on out here for a second. There she is. Catherine, everybody, from Times of Israel. Welcome. How are you? Have a seat. Yeah. And now I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Dory Gold. He's a longtime Israeli diplomat and strategist, having served as Israel's ambassador to the United Nations. As a world-renowned expert on the Middle East, he is a best-selling author of several books dealing with topics such as Saudi Arabia's funding of terrorism, the threat of a nuclear Iran, how the UN has fueled global chaos. These are comedies, I assume. Um, the future of Jerusalem and US-Israel relations. He has been a foreign policy advisor to prime ministers, this is very impressive, Ariel Sharon and Benjamin Netanyahu, and was involved in Mideast peace negotiations as an envoy to Jordan, Egypt, the Gulf States, and the Palestinian Authority. Currently, Ambassador Gold is president of the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs and has been a frequent guest on CNN, Fox News, the BBC, and Meet the Press. Please welcome to the stage a man whose entire life is spent on the diplomatic battlefront for Israel, Ambassador Dory Gold, everybody, let him know. Ambassador Gold, it's a pleasure to have you with us tonight. As a veteran diplomat with vast experience, as someone who's had profound involvement in the intricate Middle Eastern cobweb, and as one who is rumored to be in an interesting high-level position in the months to come, I hope you can share with us tonight some of your insights and thoughts on current issues. 
So let me start with a real easy one. What do you think the chances are for real progress in the political process between Israel and the Palestinians under the Trump administration? And how different, if at all, is the situation now compared with past administrations? That's called a softball. We've had a lot of lessons we've learned from past diplomatic initiatives. The people of Israel really do want peace, but they want peace with security. And unfortunately, we learned the hard way that if our security interests are not protected, if our vital interests are ignored, we invite the next round of conflict. Those of you who were in Jerusalem or Tel Aviv during the second intifada know what an exploding bus looks like. And that, those buses exploded when we had already signed peace agreements. We can never let that happen again, period. So any arrangements we might make with our Palestinian neighbors, first of all, will not just be with them. It will have to be with Arab states as well. And second of all, the security elements in any understanding with our Palestinian neighbors are going to have to be far stronger than anything you've seen before in diplomacy. And one thing I can tell you, I believe the Trump administration understands that. Thank you. So let's talk about internal Palestinian rapprochement between Hamas and Fatah. Do you see a real Palestinian unity in the horizon? And if so, what would that look like? These organizations, Fatah and Hamas, have been, have been, I can't describe them as anything else, but enemies in the past. In 2007, when Hamas waged a coup d'etat against the Palestinian Authority government in the Gaza Strip, they were throwing Fatah members off the roofs. It was, um, it unveiled, it disclosed the extreme hostility between them. I don't know if their rapprochement is going to work. Much also depends on regional conditions. Hamas, particularly its military wing, is heavily reliant upon Iran. Fatah is starting to improve its ties with Saudi Arabia. Now, how all that works out, I can't tell you, but you understand that we are talking about uh, inter-Palestinian understandings in a region that is volatile but changing. Which I think segues nicely into my next question for you. Um, you've had extensive dealings with the Arab world. You've written a great deal about it. And, and many of these are states, all of these are states, really, well, not all, but with which Israel has no diplomatic relations. And do you see now a real chance for progress there separate from the Palestinian track? And what can you tell us about recent talks between Israel and these nations? And going to what you were talking about with, the, um, with unity, how does the Islamic Republic of Iran fit into all this? Especially right now, we're seeing escalating tensions between Saudi Arabia and Iran regarding Yemen and Lebanon, and just as of the past few days between Israel and Russia in regards to Syria and the northern border there. So the big, big question. 
And people sometimes ask you when you do public speaking, I have a two-part question. Well, this is over two. Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm going to share with you a personal experience. You know, I have different hats I wear. I've been a formal Israeli diplomat. Most recently, I was Director General of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. That means I picked all the ambassadors along with, along with the uh, various committees in government that approve them. But while, uh, let's say, I have had my own official roles, unofficially, I ran a think tank, a research institute. You have plenty of those here. You go to Washington, you've got Brookings, you've got AEI, you've got Heritage, you've got another half dozen research institutes. And they become very important because they have the luxury of looking at the longer term while government has to deal with what's gonna to happen tomorrow. Well, one of my experiences running this think tank was in the, year, the years 2014 and 2015 when I was not in government. I got to know a major general from Saudi Arabia. His name is Anwar Eshki. And he runs a think tank in Jeddah, in Saudi Arabia. And I was determined, no matter what the cost would be, of creating a dialogue between my think tank in Jerusalem and his think tank in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Now, this is not an official channel, but things don't happen without somebody winking and saying, maybe this should happen. And what I discovered was that Saudi Arabia's perception of our common challenges in the Middle East were almost identical to what the Israeli perception was. We had experienced for years the threat of Hezbollah, which included the deployment of Iranian rockets and missiles on Lebanese territory aimed at Israel and fired on Israel. They were experiencing something relatively new for them. And that was the deployment of Iranian rockets and missiles in Yemen, which were fired on Saudi Arabia, which meant they had an enormous interest in understanding how we dealt with Hezbollah, because that would guide them how they should deal with the Houthis in Yemen. The Houthis were a Shia, quasi-Shiite movement that was a receiving enormous amounts of weaponry and acting as an Iranian surrogate. At one point I can share with you that the Saudi general approached me and said this Iran agreement, this nuclear agreement which the previous administration was pushing along with the other members of the P5 plus one was something that made Saudi Arabia nervous. And he even approached me and said, you know what? I'm prepared to come out of hiding. I'm prepared, Dory, to go with you to the US Congress and give testimony to a committee about the dangers of the Iran agreement. I mean, this was like one of those moments like man walks on moon, Saudi and Israeli together in public. I suggested to him, however, that this would be a direct affront to the administration, a poke in the eye. And what I recommended was that we both, since we're think tanks, let's go to a think tank. We went to the Council on Foreign Relations, which is next to Congress. It's not in Congress. But the whole US media came to our event. I told him to speak in Arabic. We got him a translator. And um, for the first time, an Israeli and a Saudi appeared together, speaking about their common concern with the growth of Iran's nuclear program. One was speaking Arabic, one was speaking English, but basically we were speaking the same language. Okay, well we have time for one very quick. 
uh, question, which is, I just wondered, in your view, have you seen a shift in the way the world now sees Israel? That's, That's the most important question that you asked tonight. Again, I was Director General of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Mankal Misrat Achutz, which means that I have all the cable traffic from all Israeli embassies across the world, and I can get a sense of what is happening. Now, it is very important to understand his background, that it is customary in Israel to say, we've never been so isolated in the world as now. This is a mantra one hears all the time. I remember I was on my way to the Herzliya conference about two years ago. I put on the radio and the organizer of the Herzliya conference goes, we've never been as isolated as now. So I changed my entire speech for the Herzliya conference and I basically said the following points and I'll say them succinctly. There's a revolution going on today in Israel's foreign policy and it is worldwide. For the first time, countries like China, Korea, Japan, Vietnam, India, have either negotiated free trade agreements with Israel and completed them, or they're about to. They've begun the negotiations. That never happened before. And we're not talking about having a cultural club you know, in Cambodia. We're talking about the stuff that these countries are primarily concerned with. Shift over into Africa. I accompanied Prime Minister Netanyahu in July of 2016 to Uganda where we went to Entebbe Airport to commemorate the 40th anniversary of the Entebbe raid, where his brother was killed. So four heads of state of the countries he was visiting on that tour, Ethiopia, Kenya, Rwanda, and of course Uganda, came for that event. But so did representatives of three other African states. We had seven African states coming to greet Israel in Africa. Prime Minister Netanyahu made a statement. We have come back to Africa and Africa has come back to us. And we continued this African initiative into West Africa. And the countries of the Sahara so we have a revolution that's been going on there. And last, I'll close with two other observations. One is Latin America, which had become extremely hostile to Israel, particularly Brazil and Argentina. Now, friendly and embracing Israel. But many other countries in Latin America that you think of as even hostile to America are sending us signals. Finally, and I'll close with this observation. In the Arab world today, virtually Israel can talk to, have a diplomatic conversation with almost every Arab state. And we've had breakthroughs. The last one I'll just tell you about is I opened an Israeli office in Abu Dhabi. Of course, it was to an international organization based in Abu Dhabi. But it didn't matter. We were running around Abu Dhabi to get a, an apartment for an Israeli ambassador. These are changes that were unthinkable years back. But they are occurring in a period when a number of people who are just, I don't know, sourpusses like to say that Israel's more isolated than ever. All right, thank you. And on behalf of everyone tonight, we thank you for your service to Israel and to the Jewish people. I have known Idan Reichel for many years. <clears throat> I have witnessed, I have witnessed firsthand 
Idan's passion for Israel. Above politics, above the petty disagreements and daily controversies, Idan <clears throat> has, has always seen the value of humanity, diversity, friendship, the power of love and music to connect people and bridge gaps of culture, language, and distance. I remember at one point in Los Angeles, Idan came to perform, and we went to one of the inner city colleges, and Idan stepped in and with his endearing smile, reaches out to the teacher and says, may I borrow your instrument? And as he starts playing to the students, none of them Jewish, Israel, had nothing to do with us. He asks them questions about their lives and who they are. And that interaction was no less than magical in the ability of music not to destroy connections between people, but to build them. Idan is a true pride to his people. It gives me great pleasure to invite Idan Reichel to the stage and inspirations to all of us. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words. Uh, thank you all for uh, this uh, great honor. Should I say more? Um, yeah, it's a great honor to, uh, to be here today. Uh, on our, um, for the past uh, 13, 14 years when we are uh, traveling around the world, um, when we are playing our music in Israel, People define our music as Israeli music. Once we are touring outside of our beloved country, people intend to define our music as world music. And I think that actually it's uh, the greatest honor for us that uh, uh, world music artists are all those artists who are bringing the soundtrack of the place that they're coming from. And if people, uh, after our concerts, uh, remember this music as Israeli music, it's actually the greatest honor for us. Uh, during the years, we are facing almost every, um, in every concert, we are facing um, uh, protests, from, uh, protests from the BDS who are uh, calling to boycott our uh, music. Um, and we uh, developed kind of uh, nice relations with uh, all those people. We don't ignore them. We go out there. They're standing out there in minus 20 degrees, so we're at least going out there with a cup of tea or something and just to try to create a dialogue. Uh, through this dialogue, we kept in contact and we are, um, I think that we are helping to, um, uh, to avoid this misinformation uh, that they got uh, towards our um, beloved country. Maybe I should stop talking, no? It's, uh, I want to thank you for everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Idan will be back for a solo performance in just a few minutes, but how about a hand for Idan Reichel, everybody? Yes. And let's hear it for Ambassador Dory Gold. Yes. Hilarious as always. The truth is, you should know, he does incredible behind-the-scenes work that, that, let me just say, I'll be the funny gold, you fight for Israel behind the scenes, so thank you, yes. But seriously, not an icebreaker, no jokes, not, all right, I'm not going to mess with him. Um, did everybody bench? Did you bench? All right, you said the grace after me? It's, a, it's okay, if you didn't, uh, I did, and I had you all in mind. Do you know about this loophole in Judaism? This table knows. Right? You know about that whole you should have in mind thing. You don't have to do stuff yourself. You could have, like, someone else do it for you, and as long as they have you in mind, you get the mitzvah points. I wish life worked this way, right? Like, oh, you're going to the gym? Yeah, have me in mind, would you please? I'm, I hear you're getting a colonoscopy tomorrow. Yeah, when you're bent over, would you think about me while you're... This isn't at all distracting. Um, let's talk about the Jews for just a minute while they set up. My favorite topic, my favorite people. Jews, we are, uh, we're obsessed with time, right? Especially us observant Jews, we're obsessed with time. What time does Shabbos start? 
What time's the fast end? Latest time for Shema, earliest time for Mincha. Do you know that the Jewish calendar is the only calendar with minutes on it? <laughs> Think about it. Any other calendar has months, weeks, days, no minutes. You don't open like an American calendar, see an American holiday, be like, oh, Martin Luther King Day starts 548. Ends the next day, 6.52. All right, good to know. No one in history has ever said, hey, uh, what time is Christmas this year? Uh, tree lighting is 4.31. <laughs> but with the 18 minutes, it's 4.49. You got plenty of time. We have this pressure, right? Every Friday, the countdown to sundown, especially now that the clock's changed. Friday's in the winter, you wake up, you're like, oh, crap, it's almost Shabbos. There's no time for anything. Gentiles don't have this pressure. They don't come home on a Friday night a afternoon in a panic. Honey, when does the weekend start? Uh, check the magnet on the fridge. We're obsessed. We're obsessed with time. We're obsessed with food. And then we're obsessed with timing our food. Right? Gentiles never ask each other, so uh, how long do you wait? Wait for what? Like after you have meat, how long before, you know, you could have dairy? Uh, I'm eating a cheeseburger now, so zero minutes, I guess. And we all have our own traditions, right? We all have, oh, I wait six hours, I wait three hours, I wait five hours and one minute, I wait one minute and five seconds. I actually do, I wait three hours. I do. I'm a traditional guy, my father does it, my grandfather did it. Yeah, so I do it, but it's a pain in the neck, because I'm not really enjoying the meat, I'm just chewing and calculating the whole time, right? I'm just like, okay, 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 all right, okay, okay, ready? Go. All right, that's 243 to 343, 443. Is that two hours, three hours? I'm not good at math. I live in LA, I call my parents here in New York. I'm like, what time is it there? 543? All right, that's when I'm dairy. Thank you. I literally, I wear two watches. People are like, oh, cool, New York, LA? No, meat and dairy, right there. But we all have our own, like, observance, our own level of observance, right? And, and we all think that whatever level we're at is perfect. And anyone that's more observant than you is crazy. And anyone that's less observant than you is Catholic. <laughs> but it's a very pick and choose religion, right? It's like, oh, I'll take a law from here. I don't really care for that one. Oh, we'll do this custom. We're never going to do that custom, right? I keep Shabbos. I don't keep Shabbos. I turn the lights on, but I don't drive. I drive, but I don't turn the headlights on. It's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Seriously? We leave the TV on, but we don't watch it. Um, my favorite, we have a strictly kosher home, but we go out of the house. It's a festival of trafe. That's right. And I don't judge. Who am I to judge? I don't judge. You know, I think actually it's good. If you have a kosher home and that's, that's where you're keeping part of our observances, it's better than nothing, right? I just find it funny that you don't see that type of hypocrisy in other groups like, say, vegetarians, right? You never see a guy be like, yeah, I'm a strict vegetarian, but I eat meat out. <laughs> you know, because I'm out. I'm out when I'm in. Oh, yeah. When I'm in, we don't have fish, eggs, nothing. But we're out. Veal, lamb, kittens. Why not? We're out. In the house? Oh, in the house. We don't have a leather sofa. There's no fur. But when we're out, we go hunting. We shoot animals. Why not? We're out. They're out. All bets are off, right? By the way, in my house, I make love to my wife only. But when I'm out... Oh. Are we ready? I could do another hour, but I think Edan wants to come up here. All right. We could, we could go for another couple of minutes, right, people? We're having fun. We could talk about Israel, my other favorite topic. I love Israel. I really do. My mother uh, was born in Israel. Uh, let's just say before 1948. I'm not going to give away her age, but that's true. She was born before, she's living proof that there were Jews before the official state, right? I love that she is like proof that there, there were Jews before and there will always be a Jewish presence in Israel. And, uh, but yeah, but it's amazing if you think about it. My mother's uh, Palestinian. It's crazy. It actually says it on her birth certificate. She's a Palestinian Jew. She throws rocks at herself. It's really disconcerting. Um, but of all the, you know, all the men, I was just in Israel a couple of weeks ago, and all the men there are very macho, right? They're all very, like, first of all, the women are just, they're all Wonder Woman. They're all just stunning and intelligent, right? And strong. And the men are also, yes, 
The men are so much more macho than American Jewish men. No offense, but look around if you don't know what I'm saying. You go to Israel and all the men are like, they're just like, uh, you know, I was in the army and uh, I fought in the walls. They're like Jewish Arnold Schwarzeneggers, I swear. The, that's right, I was uh, the fighter pilot, uh, Lebanon won, then I did the sequel, Lebanon 2. But they also have this like soft side to them and it's when they hit the letter S. They have this sort of effeminate lisp about them, right? You gotta listen for it. So it's like, um, I don't want this. I will have this. Yes, this, not this, please. You know, I was in the army, not this, okay? This one, yes, this, not this, this, please. I fought in the walls. My favorite thing that Israelis do is uh, they will take a word that's singular and make it plural, and then a word that's plural and make it singular, right? They're always like, hey, you know, I heard a lot of story about this. <laughs> yeah, that reminds me in particular of this one story. Uh, like, uh, when I eat soup, I like to pour a lot of crouton into my soup, but some people's, uh, they only put one croutons. It's weird, it's weird. Who puts one croutons in a bowl of soups? I don't get it. Israel, though, if you think about it, it literally is the miracle of the Jewish people. I know we all think of Hanukkah when we think of miracles, right? And that's a, that's a fine miracle, but it's not that exciting. In fact, by the way, it's very difficult for me to explain Hanukkah to my non-Jewish friends without perpetuating one of our stereotypes. You know, I'm always like, well, uh, we bought enough oil to last one day. And then like a miracle happened and we didn't have to purchase any more oil for like another week. And they're always like, wait, so you built a holiday around the buy one, get seven free deal. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much, pretty much. Meanwhile, the Arabs have all the oil and not one oil-related holiday, right? How weird is that? We have no oil and we've got the oil holiday. We did find natural gas in Israel, which was exciting, but you know, the Jews have had natural gas for thousands of years. Uh, it's from all that schnitzel we eat every day. It's, we're having it right now, in fact. Well, I could go on, but folks, we do have a special treat. We have a solo performance from the one and only Idan Reichel. And I wanna just thank you all for coming. Please come back next year. Please continue to support and stand with us. Stand with Israel. I'll see you next time. Ladies and gentlemen, Idan Reichel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I'm sorry that I'm with my back to you. I always wanted to be a guitar player that can Walk around the stage, but this is how it is. So it's a great honor here to play uh, for Stan with us. And uh, I want to tell you here, being in New York, that I have a huge respect for you being able to stand this weather.
מי ייתן חייו ישים מה מתחתייך, מי כעפר לרגלייך יחיה, מי יאהבך עוד מכל אוהבייך, מי מכל רוח בארץ יילך במעמקים. very often that I don't explain much about the songs between the songs. So I wanted to say that uh, the last song was in Hebrew. Actually, uh, I'm in a good mood today. When I'm in a good mood, I, I might talk a lot, so I'm not. Uh, but I want, <laughs> I want to tell you that it's, uh, it's the, like the very first concert. I, I took off since last May, and I'm not, uh, I'm staying in Israel. Uh, uh, last February, I started a tour of like uh, three months, and I was three months on the road. Then after two months, I, it was always like that, like going on the road. But then, uh, but then my daughter, Um, called me after two months, around April. She was uh, three years old. And she asked me, she called me after two months and she asked me, uh, Papa, I said, what? I said, are you angry with me? And I said, no, why would you think that? She said, why you don't come home to visit me? <laughs> so I said, no, I'm not angry with you. I'm angry with your sister. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> But then, but then I, I'm just kidding. And then I decided to stay a few months home. So I'm very happy to come here today. Um, it's a nice. Um, I missed this to be on the road a bit. I didn't miss this weather, but I missed this. Thank you for having me here today. <laughs> יש לי ילדה קטנה, אף פעם לא בוכה סתם, יש לה סיבות משלה שומרת לעצמה. כל מה שהיא שומעת ומה שהיא יודעת, בעיניה היא רואה הכל והכל היא מבינה. ואם תראו כזאת ילדה שלי קטנה, לא רוצה לישון עכשיו, השנינו במיטה. ואימא שלה אומרת, שרק תהיה בריאה, שרק תהיה טובה, כמו שהיא כבר מחכה, ילדה שלי קטנה. ילדה שלי קטנה. הילדה 
שלי לוחשת, מדברת בלי מילים, בלילות הלב אני איתה, קול קטן מלטף, וכשהיא מחייכת אליי, זה תמיד מכל הלב, ואני שוב מתאהב בה, בכל יום זה מתגבר, ואם תראו כזאתי, ילדה שלי קטנה, לא רוצה לישון עכשיו, אז שנינו במיטה. ואימא שלה אומרת, שרק תהיה בריאה, שרק תהיה טובה, כמו שהיא כבר בעצמה, כמו ילדה שלי קטנה. כמו ילדה שלי קטנה.
Don Reichel, what an unbelievable performance. Awe-inspiring. Amazing. Don Reichel, what a night, huh? Wow, what a performance. Incredible. Thank you so much. What a night. Don, Ilan, Sushar, Sachar. I think we've covered it all. Thank you for standing with us. Continue to stand with Israel. We'll see you next time. Good night, everybody. What a night. Yes, thank you.
we would be pleased to send a complimentary DVD of this program to anyone who wishes to support JBS with a tax-deductible gift of $36, double high or more. Simply visit the JBS website at jbstv.org and click on the Donate button to make a donation by PayPal or your credit card. And please, indicate the program for which you would like a DVD. Or you can send your tax-deductible check to JBS, P.O. Box 180, Riverdale Station, Bronx, New York, 10471. And again, please remember to indicate which program you would like to receive with our compliments. And we thank you for your kind support.